And their son, Jan, was born in January, so they called it the January School. Seven children started at that school. Smaller than, uh, it's a, a very small class. And Mrs. Gregier was the first principal. In 1967, six years later, the Gregiers moved to Ottawa and a board of directors took over the school. They hired a new principal, Mrs. Darling. Then there was a principal named Mrs. Atkinson, a principal named Miss Etchells. And then in 1970, a very special woman took over the school and that's Catherine Livingston, who I know all of you have had a chance to see. When we were looking for names of our houses a few years ago, we landed on Catherine Livingston very quickly, and we decided that compassion was going to be the value for Miss Livingston's house. Many of the best things at this school came from Miss Livingston. Loving the children, knowing everybody by name, recognizing and celebrating great things in every child, understanding that children learn differently, and that's wonderful, and therefore they get taught differently and ensuring that there's a place at the school for children with learning disabilities. And the school grew. More houses were bought. They were all in what's now Livingston House, Fort Montcrest, that first school. But new houses were bought, more homes were bought, and more and more children were lined up to come to this special school. The children asked, Mrs. Mrs. Livingston asked the children what to name the January school after they moved here, and they told her Montcrest School. As she was saying this morning, she asked the children, do you want uniforms? And they said, yes, of all things. The children asked Mrs. Livingston to put in a grade seven and eight, and so she did. In 19, the, some of our favorite traditions began too, the mini marathon, the Montcrest players. In 1982, Mrs. Livingston retired, and Mrs. Wilson and Miss Johnston became the principals. In 1986, one of our favorite traditions, Kite Day, was started by a young teacher named Betty White. In 1987, the school had its first man to be principal, and that was Mr. Hookie. Miss Danson started as principal in 1991, and she had a dream to make this special school even bigger. Parents recognized how wonderful a school this was, and so many wanted to bring their children here. So the school bought more buildings. 650 Broadview was turned into a grade seven, eight building. And there was the fall fair began, Montcrest Singers began. And in 1991, Miss Danson uh, had a big dream, the big building with a gym and a band room, library, classrooms, but always sharing Miss Livingston's original vision of the school. Soon there were sports teams and instr instrumental music and honor pins standing for character, Fox, Massey, Livingston and McClung houses, spice days, just this year, we came back to our brand new schoolyard. And here we are, our little school, 50 years old. In all that time, so many faces. And yours are all some of those important faces. So many children, so many hugs, children well taken care of. The school has changed the lives of thousands of children. Because of Catherine Livingston's vision of a place where children are loved and taught the right way, and their lives so changed, they changed the lives of those around them. And the whole world is made a better place. It is an honor to welcome Miss Livingston back to her school. Well, it's a tremendous honor for me to be here, children. More than you'll ever know, really. Unless you maybe live to be 96 years old and you can look back and some of the things that you did that made you very very happy made your life worth living and this school was the most important thing in my life besides my two children and of course here I got lots more children and I'm getting grandchildren and great-grandchildren even though I don't know them all now I know that you're all very very excited to get those kites in the sky and that's something that you might think about as those kites go up. This is a little bit like Montcrest School. We sent out a kite and it went up and up and up and I think it's still going. Nobody knows exactly where it is, but it's up there somewhere. And I thought maybe you might like to hear a couple of funny stories. Would you like a funny story? Well, one, we used to always sing at, at uh, our assemblies 
And one of the children said to me, Mrs. Livingston, why don't you sing? And I said, well, do you know the story of the fox and the crow and the piece of cheese? No. I said, well, I'll tell you what the story is. The crow was sitting up there in the truth, a big piece of cheese in his mouth. And the fox wanted it. And how are you going to get that piece of cheese? So what did he do? Oh, Mrs. Crow, you have such a beautiful voice. Please sing me one of your lovely songs. So the crow went, caw, caw, caw. But just what's happened to the cheese? fell down and then he got his cheese and said, well, Mrs. Crow, that shows what happens to you when you listen to flatterers. <laughs> so that's why I don't sing. <laughs> so I decided that if I ever have a next life, I wanted to have a nice voice, and I wanted to have nice tiny feet. <laughs> My feet are a little bit on the big side. Well, every Halloween, I don't know what your tradition is here, but it was a small school then, but I would dress up like a witch. And I'd go all over and put all funny things on my face, and everybody really knew who I was, and I'd make all sorts of threats and that kind of thing. Nobody was scared, of course. But one day, I put on something that you children probably know about now because of all the history of what's going on in the Middle East. How many of you know what a burqa is? Anybody? It's a, it, the women in that area have to keep themselves covered. And I had a very beautiful one that had been sent to me from uh, Afghanistan. Lovely dark blue silk, and it had a little woven eye piece that you could look through. So I thought, I think I'm going to be different this time. They won't really know who I am. So I put this on and got my face all covered and I wrapped it all around me. And then I had some rather fancy Moroccan shoes or something like that. Nobody knew who I was. Nobody. I went after room after room. Then I went down into the art room. And I wish you were here to hear this one of our alumni, Timmy Dutton. And he was in about the third grade, and he had a bit of a drawl, and he was working away, and, and all the children were saying, who is that, who is that, who is that? He said, it's Mrs. Livingston. How do you know? By her feet. <laughs> well, bless you all and I love you all I don't know you all but I love each one of you in my heart those children who've been here past present and to come and now go out and fly your kites if that's what you're supposed that's to do next do. thank you Mrs. Lynn. thank you Mrs. Livingston uh, where am I? We are at the video. We have a special video message from, uh, I've mentioned Mr. Hookie. And Mr. Hookie has been uh, the head of school up at a school called Rosso Lake. And he couldn't make it today, but he sent us a special video message. So we're going to run that now. Hi, my name is Graham Hookie. I was the principal of Montcrest School from 1987 to 1990. The chair of the board in 1987 was Valerie Schatzker, and she gave me my first opportunity to have a leadership role, for which I'm very grateful, Valerie. But of course, it was a very low side risk for her. With Elaine Danson already as the director of the LD services at Montcrest School, I was really just a warm up for her ascendancy to the throne. Montcrest was a school that had a deep and genuine sense of community. I believe that's why there are still a number of staff members there now who were there when I was there. Uh, the parents, the staff, the students all had great pride in the school and of course that made for me a very rewarding experience as a first time leader.
ultimately I had to leave Montcrest because every year we were there, my wife and I, Donna, were blessed with a new son. I don't know what was in the Bloor Danforth water, but a 10 to 15 year career at Montcrest just wasn't going to be a good thing. Thank you, Valerie, for the opportunity to work with the Montcrest community, and thank you, Brian Levitt, who followed as uh, Valerie as the chairman of the board and uh, with the tremendous work for the school as well. And to Elaine and to the faculty and to all the families who were there while I was there, uh, thank you for the experience that we had. It was a tremendously rewarding one for all of us. Uh, I would like to wish all of the Montcrest community, both past and present, a uh, happy 50th anniversary. And as only you can say in Montcrest and get away with it, uh, tomorrow on Friday, May the 20th, go fly a kite. Montcrest School is the story of two amazing women. The first was Mrs. Livingston, and the second became principal in 1991, and that's Miss Danson. Miss Danson is the best teacher I ever had, and it is my pleasure to welcome her back to Montcrest School. It doesn't get better than this. We've talked about our past and the wonderful growth of the school. I just want to take a moment to talk about our future. And our future is here with us today in all of you, your children, your children's children. Let's keep Montcrest alive. Let's keep the spirit of Montcrest. And let's make sure every, each and every one of you that you remember that Montcrest School is a huge part of your life. Come back and enjoy it. Bring your friends, bring your children, and make sure the school is always safe, happy, productive, exciting for all the years to come. And let's plan to meet here. 60th year, what do you say? And for my friends who I meet here every kite day, I'll be here every kite day to see you flying a kite out at Riverdale Park. Thank you, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll see you in the park. Right, we have a couple of um, uh, presentations, very special presentations, and I'm gonna begin, I have a message for Montcrest School, and this is from Mayor Rob Ford, the mayor of our city of Toronto. It says right at the top, a message from the mayor. So I'm gonna read this aloud. It gives me great pleasure to extend greetings and congratulations to everyone celebrating Montcrest School's 50th anniversary. For the past five decades, Montcrest School has been committed to helping children find a love of learning. With classes from kindergarten to grade eight, the school provides its students with a wonderful academic experience and a wide variety of opportunities in leadership, the arts, and athletics. Educational institutions are integral to our city's cultural and social development. As parents, educators, and leaders, leaders it is important that we provide nurturing environments that inspire children to strive for personal success. On behalf of Toronto City Council, I congratulate Montcrest School on this milestone anniversary and extend my best wishes for continued success. Happy birthday, yours truly, Mayor Rob Ford. Now, Mayor Ford is not the only message we're getting from City Council today. Paula Fletcher, our representative to City Council in this neighborhood since 2003 is here with us as well. Councillor Fletcher is the chair of the Parks and Environment Committee and has been a champion of clean air, sustainable energy, and green spaces for Torontonians. She is a welcome guest in our school. She has been here to see us before. We are particularly proud today, Councillor Fletcher, to show off our new schoolyard to you because it's new since you were last here. Would everybody please join me in welcoming Councillor Fletcher. Thank you, thank you, Stephen, and it's very nice to be here tonight 
today, actually, to celebrate this really milestone anniversary for this great school. And I remember when it was just one small building, and now you've swept right around the corner and moving up Broadview, and I commend you for that. It's great that you've kept these buildings in the heritage state that they are and worked with the built form in the neighborhood. Montcrest, I've been here recently because in your wisdom, you uh, bought one of the houses, that uh, one of the heritage houses, and that was William Peyton Hubbard's house. And William Peyton Hubbard, as I know all of the students know, was the first black alderman in the city of Toronto and the first black mayor of the city of Toronto. And you have honored him with the heritage plaque in front of his first home. So thank you very much for that, doing that for our whole community, not just for the school in your 50 years. And I actually have a plaque for you on 50 years from the mayor and from all of Toronto City Council that recognizes 50 years in Montcrest School having provided to students the quality education, guidance, and confidence to contribute to the success of Toronto. And I do think that all of you who graduate here contribute to tremendous success in our city. The principals, teachers, and support staff have provided their students with a comfortable, safe, and stimulating environment in which the students' strengths and talents are nurtured. We thank you for motivating and inspiring young people on their journey to academic excellence and success. Best wishes for an enjoyable celebration, and that is from the mayor and myself. And I'd like to present that to Stephen. One more special guest to introduce. We have also joining us today our member of provincial parliament. So this is the person who is elected from our neighborhood here to go to Queen's Park and be part of the provincial uh, legislation on our behalf. And this is a, a gentleman named Peter Tabbins. He's been since 2006. He's been the MPP at Queen's Park. He was the energy. He is the energy and environment critic, and he is a former executive director of Greenpeace. Mr. Tabbins, we are very pleased to welcome you to Montcrest School. Well, good afternoon, boys and girls. <laughs> I don't mind if you add on the Mr. Tabbins, that sounds good. Are you excited about Kite Day? <laughs> Well, I don't blame you, because you have great kites there. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's my honor to be here. It's my pleasure to be here. You, boys and girls, are lucky to be in an excellent school. It's been around for 50 years. People like Mrs. Livingston put down a foundation for children like you over the generations to be nurtured, to be educated, and now, 50 years later, a school that's going strong and, frankly, looks like it's ready to go for at least another 50 years, if not longer. You'll be able to tell your grandchildren you were there for the 50th. I also have a plaque. I want to bring congratulations from the province of Ontario. Congratulations on excellent work on a school that matters and the contribution you've made to our community. If I could give it to Principal Beattie. Wow, well, so we have had special guests today. What a fabulous day we've had. I'm gonna shift gears into kite day mode, so I need Everyone listening carefully, I'm going to do my safety bit now. So we're going to need everybody listening carefully. Couple of things after 
assembly. Betty's going to speak. We have a slideshow. We're going to sing as we always do. Then we're going to make our way out the doors. Parents are waiting. We're going to go down to the park. I need to tell you this. Where's my man, Scotty? Scotty, should we run down the hill? No. So, it's really slippery. I know, Scotty. Scott, I appreciate that. Good man. He was so brave last year. So, the hill is really slippery. I am going to ask. I need everybody listening, please. I need to know everyone's listening. The hill is really slippery. I need to ask everybody to walk down the hill. Fly your kite when you get to the bottom of the hill, but please walk down the hill. Secondly, remember you cannot go home from the park. Everybody at the end of kite day, you're going to hear, we're going to blow whistles at 3 o'clock. We are all going to come up together and you are back to your homeroom for attendance. So we're doing attendance back in homerooms, come up as a big clump. You can't go home from the park. Can you go home from the park? No. Right. You're not allowed to leave from the park. If your parents come to you and say, okay, come on, we're leaving now, we're going to the cottage, you can't go home from the park. No, you can't go home from the park. So, uh, you tell your parents, I have to go back to my homeroom after kite day. If your parents still want to talk to someone about that, they can come talk to me about that, and I'll tell your parents, you can't go home from the park. We all come back here, we take attendance, we go on our way, and as I say every year, if we do that okay, I will close the school Monday. Uh, the, the whistle will be what tells you when kite day's over. Pull in your kite as fast as you can and come on up. Okay. Mr. Borston, have I missed anything? I got it right. It took me 10 years and I got it right. Okay. Um, so. I am going to introduce um, the person, Kite Day began as an idea. And like great ideas, like the January school and like Montcrest school, as Mrs. Livingston said, they, you let the string out and they fly higher and higher and higher. And Kite Day is one of those ideas. And Kite Day is, was the dream and the idea of Betty White. So I'm going to invite Betty White up to say a couple of words to us. Because of our very busy schedules this year, many of you were unable to finish painting your kites during your regular art periods. I watched many of you come to the art room in between all your activities, desperately trying to finish your beautiful and highly individual works of art. And it warmed my heart. Uh, it isn't easy to keep up that artistic side of your lives, even as children these days. As I was thinking about what to say today, I looked back in my Kite Day speech files. Five years ago, we bid our Miss Danson goodbye and welcomed our Mr. Beatty. Today, we will bid our Mr. Beatty goodbye and welcome Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Time does fly, just like your sled kites every year. We are also celebrating our 50th anniversary this year, all year. Um, history is what happened in the past. History is happening while we are flying our kites. And what will happen in the future... Oh, sorry, I didn't read that properly. I'm going to read it again. I'm so nervous. <laughs> history is what happened in the past, is happening while we are flying our kites, and what will happen in the future. Kite day is both our past 
our present, and our future. Each Kite Day is a new page in Mooncrest's history, so let's go fly our kites, and as we do, recall the kites of yesterday, the kites of today, and imagine the kites of tomorrow. So. Could the following students please come up and hold uh, the kites that I've assigned to you? Lydia Frank and Kaylin Mestel will lead the grade threes. Lydia Frank and Kaylin Mestel. Could Ebba, Leander O, Brenna Moore, and Aaron Cooper lead grade four? Ryan Kopp and Rachel Leonard lead, did I, wait a minute, Ryan Kopp and Rachel Lair lead grade five. Ryan Kopp, is he here? Okay. Joel Segman and Katie Brasser and Luna Ramling lead grade six. Joey McMeans and Teresa Lukuzniak, could you come up? And Jesse Bowles Conover, and who, Jeff, who was, and D James Trachek, lead grade eight, and Robbie Soloway and Charlotte Steen lead the procession with the big kite, which is here. Robbie? We're all here. So you guys hold still for one second. It's okay, yeah, don't, don't pick it up yet though. Don't pick it up. Okay, everybody, we will be leaving in a second. Quiet, please. We have got, quiet please everyone, kites still on the floor. Kites on the floor, please. We have one more treat this afternoon. We have a very special slideshow, which is going to end with our singing that we always sing, and then we will head down to the park. So let's roll the slideshow, please. Everybody sitting quietly.
Of your kites. Oh. 